There's nothing more draining than going out and performing for people night after night. When you ultimately walk off stage going, oh, mm -hmm. I'm so glad that's over with. And I've done that so many times. And it's just, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. And until, you know, when I'm walking out there saying, this is me, this is what I want to share with you, I invite you in. There's a whole different energy. Welcome to the Deja Vu podcast, where we believe that living a life of magic can be the default. Join us each week as we playfully and authentically dive into the mysteries of life and explore what it truly means to be human. From spirituality, wellness, and all things to do, we don't hold anything back. So without further ado, let's let the magic unfold. Hello, you beautiful humans, and welcome back to another episode of the Deja Blue podcast. My heart is pounding. My <laughs> palms are sweaty. I am so, Aww. so, so excited about today's guest uh, for many reasons, but I want to start with my personal reason. Um... I came across you uh, on Instagram not that long ago. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, you had followed me or something had happened that put you on my map. But more so, what really stood out to me was your heart oh, thank you. and how much you cared and the frequency that sits behind <laughs> your recent music Thanks. that I feel. And I don't hear as I mean, you know, just like moment. you made me cry with your prayer and now you made me cry with this. Thank you. In the best of ways. Uh, and um, uh, I was just sharing with you just before the podcast started that I don't, you know, here I don't hear lyrics and songs, but um, I feel the vibration behind the words in the songs. Sorry. And so please, I, <laughs> we love the tears. It's, you yes. have not been the first person yes. that has wept uh -huh. in this golden hand. Okay, good. Yeah. It's a regular occurrence. Yeah. I cry most po episodes. Uh, by the, good. Uh, That's good to know. Sort of <laughs> um, but it's your, recent, it's your recent album that has touched me in a way that um, has activated a reclamation within my own heart when I listen to it. And I feel so seen uh, oh. in what it is that you're creating. And even the, the painting that I have painted behind you was the, the reclamation energetics that were coming through um, as a woman that is claiming her voice and mm -hmm. uh, having the courage of the lion to speak my truth and over my heart, to honor my heart, my boundaries, my full fuck yes and my full fuck no <laughs> across the board. Yeah. Um, and also at the same time, going back a little bit of my experience of your music as I, I grew up listening to your music. So mm -hmm. when I was a kid, I would be belting out your songs in my bedroom. <laughs> and that. so it feels like such a special journey for me to have been able to relate to you from and just loving your music as a child to then learning to love your heart mm -hmm. and the courage that you have gone through throughout the arc of your journey to be able to create music that I believe is actually uh, music is medicine, mm -hmm. uh, medicine, music. Yeah. Um, and so uh, and then, of course, there's also the, all of the other things that you've accomplished, which is actually mind blowing. But one of my favorite facts that I found out recently was that your first album was called Blue. It was. Oh, and my I, God. I didn't even think about that. Yes. <laughs> and I went through yes. it. And I was like, of course. Uh, of course it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, you have so released uh, 19 albums mm -hmm. uh, in in. Um, and then your final album that you've recently just released, or found your album, the last yeah. album that you just released, um, God's Work. And the rawness and uh, specifically the music video Spaceship, which mm, I was yeah. I was bawling in my room last yeah. night, <laughs> feeling the raw. Good. Well, I made you cry. Oh, Thank you. No, no. It's, it's been a perpetual thing. Like leading up to this, I've been uh, weeping in my room. Uh, and then um, and then we, we, we dove into a practice before the podcast and I got to you, pull you yes. on your Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think my emotions, that's what you see on that video and what you just experienced with you praying. I mean, it's they're, they're right there. Like yeah. I'm such an... We all are emotional feeling beings, mm -hmm. but like mine are like, I feel like sometimes I wear them outside of my skin, you know, and they're so easily, um, yeah, I, I, it, they're just easily activated mm -hmm. and in the best of ways. And I've had to learn how to use that as a gift and see it as a gift because mm -hmm. it can also feel like I'm, you know, I, I feel like most days I I don't know how many emotions I experience in a day and it just feels like this roller coaster ride. Yeah. But it's where I create from. I mean, it was, you know, when you really tapped in as a creator to um to creating from that kind of a deep emotional place, it's mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't shut it off, you mm -hmm. know. Um so I love it. I mean, I've now like I've like I just said, I just surrendered. It's like I just surrender to you. 
to the feelings that are that mm-hmm. are wanting to be expressed and mm-hmm. they're always right there. <laughs> I can feel the alchemical process that you have gone through mm-hmm. behind the songs from turning what once um, was a, a really challenging experience into something beautiful mm-hmm. through the alchemical process of making art from the challenging oh, emotion. Absolutely. So I, I guess I would love to start there. It's like from the perspective of emotional alchemy, meaning mm-hmm. that you've gone through this, whatever experience is that has activated these emotions within you and then turned it into a piece of art that then when I watch it sitting in my room, hits me in a level. Mm. I don't even hear the lyrics. I had to Google the lyrics afterwards, Mm. but it was the raw emotion and Mm -hmm. the feeling that this was medicine for you at one point that's now becoming medicine for others to be able to have a direct access to their emotions so that there's an outlet to feel it. Mm -hmm. So I would love, uh, from your perspective, what would you say is the alchemical emotional process that you move through when turning your challenge into your art? Oh, interesting. Um, I don't know if I've ever really thought too much about it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just something that's been very natural for me. And when I was, I mean, I started singing when I was so young, Mm -hmm. so... I would sing about things that I didn't understand. My dad would actually sit and explain these stories to me. And somehow um, I just had this other place to pull from emotionally and can make people feel what I was expressing, the story Mm -hmm. I was telling through my music from a very early age. And as I got older, I started to realize, oh, that's actually the gift, Mm -hmm. Um, that my voice was just... a, it's part of the gift, but I used to think that the voice was the gift. Mm-hmm. And I, as I've gotten older, I've realized that like the actual feeling and the expression of being able to, to bring that through mm-hmm. um, and to help people feel things that they maybe can go places they don't necessarily go alone. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the gift. Like mm-hmm. that's really the gift. And so it's, um, I love that. Like I literally get off on like moving people. (laughs) It's such a beautiful thing to, to be able to do. And, you know, I, I feel like sometimes when I write my own music, when I've I've been writing my own music for a long time now, um, sometimes I don't even know how I feel about a certain thing until it comes out and forms into a song. Mm -hmm. So I guess that, that alchemical process is, you know, convening with, you know, whatever is coming through me, being a vessel um, for creation, and then allowing myself to dig into all these spaces that maybe I even hide from myself until mm-hmm. till that moment and allowing that to come through. Mm-hmm. And especially with, with God's work with this record, the albums before that that I've written, and there's always a personal aspect to to everything that I create, but I feel like with this album specifically, there was more of, I tapped into more of a collective experience Mm -hmm. that we were all going through over these past three years. And of course it was coming from a a personal point of view, but, you know, it was this one moment in time in our lifetime, you know, now that we've, we've actually worked all over the world, we're experiencing this collective experience um, that was so powerful. And you know, really, I mean, for all of us to be sitting at home and having to wade in the deep waters of, you know, all the things that life usually takes us away from, we weren't able to feel those things until now. Like Mm -hmm. there was so much rage that came up in me and Mm -hmm. so much emotion and so much fear. And like, I I knew like, I'm not the only person experiencing this. And when I started to write, it just kind of all came out. And, you know, to see people now experiencing these emotions and the, the how moved people are through this album. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's wild and so incredibly beautiful. And I feel so less alone in mm-hmm. all of my experience. You know, I think, I think that's why we create, I feel, you know, to, to be able to feel less alone mm-hmm. um, and to give people words, to give people something to express the things inside of them that they, might not have had before that like mm-hmm. this is such a beautiful gift to give 
Mm-hmm. It's laced with real. It's yeah. laced with magnetism. It's laced with relatability and also, like you said, like an access point to be able to feel what hasn't been able to be accessible mm-hmm. before. But ultimately, and I'm sure you understand this, is that the the it's in the feeling is where the healing happens. Yeah. It's actually yeah. feeling the suppressed emotions right. and the things that have been like, no, not right now. Yeah. You are not worthy to be here. <laughs> and like push it down. But there yeah. are certain, whether it's a beautiful piece of artwork or it's hearing a song that mm. gives access to that thing that then created distortion or even disease in the body. Mm. And that is so deeply felt from from many of the, I mean, all of the songs. It's a whole journey. I feel like I I really got to understand the reclamation that mm. you have gone through just through this this um, recent album. And yeah. I would love to hear a little bit more about what a reclamation means to you. Oh, my God. Um, for me, it's been about reclaiming all the fragmented pieces to mm. bring them back to feel like a whole person, a whole mm. being. Um, I mean, so much of my... So much of my life has been lived out in the public eye and with so many different opinions about who I am and who I should be and who I shouldn't be. And, um, you know, to have, we're all fragmented, um, but mine was really magnet, you know, magnified. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember at one point in my like mid twenties taking on, you know, listening and hearing all of these things that came, came back at me of who people thought I was or wasn't. And, questioning like am I am I am I that bad am I what (laughs) like am I this person and it was because I I hadn't taken the time to really know who I was through my from the inside out Mm -hmm. instead of from the outside in yeah and so once I did I was like oh yeah I could see where I could see where people could view me like that you know it was didn't mean that that was actually true but I oh I can see where maybe some of my choices would you could view me that way but no that's not really that's not who I am Mm -hmm. um so I started to really kind of reclaim my own story um and all of these different fragmented pieces of myself and my emotions (laughs) you know allowing myself to have them all um and yeah to feel to bring that back into feeling whole for the first time not even you know I think we feel whole as little beings mm-hmm. and then the fragmentation starts so early on. Mm-hmm. Um, but as an adult to feel whole for the first time, mm-hmm. um, it really was just about, like I said, living from the inside out. And that's still a, it's still a journey. Like mm-hmm. it's, and I think it, that I grow deeper into that inside out instead of outside in every day. It's so funny that you're saying inside out, outside in, because it's literally been the theme of my year. It's oh, right. like, <laughs> in, in exact words. Of like, okay, where in my life am I living from the outside in of mm-hmm. some sort of validation, whether it's in romantic partnerships, whether it's in friendships, whether it's in work, what, no matter uh, wherever I place my awareness, am I living from this place of, oh, I need to be this version of myself because X, Y, and Z from the outside? Mm-hmm. Or is this coming back to a place of how does this feel in my body Mm -hmm. and from that place sharing and inviting people into that space. Yes, absolutely. It's like create, um, one of my sweet friends I've talked about many times of like how I want to kind of shift in the way that I'm creating an experience for people on stage. Mm -hmm. And, um, she's, she's constantly telling me like create for yourself and invite people into that space. Yeah. And it's so true. It's like what feels good to me, like, cause I mean, there's nothing more draining than going out and performing for people night after night when you ultimately walk off stage going, oh, Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that's over with. And I've done that so many times. And it's just, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. And until, you know, when I'm walking out there saying, this is me, this is what I want to share with you, I invite you in, um, Mm -hmm. it's come, there's a whole different energy. Mm-hmm. And I think that's then that for me, that's where it starts is like experimenting with that, that energy on stage. But then I start to realize how that trickles down to like every little thing in my life from, you know, how I create life with my husband to um, my friendships and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, how I, how I choose to show up every day. If I, if I want to wear my sweats or if I want mm-hmm. to like, you know, wear a dress, like whatever it is, mm-hmm. how does it feel? Like and if you're ultimately uncomfortable doing the thing. Mm-hmm. And it's it is a whole different energy in your body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's so much 
God, there's just so much joy. There's more joy accessible when it's from the inside out. It's really mind blowing for me to, um, I guess, have seen since I was a child listening to your music, but the arc of your journey <laughs> of and also how rare it is Very. to have not fully let the waters of the world's expectations close in over your head to the point where it's completely tapped you out but what I've actually witnessed within you is it's it's been like um a phoenix rising from the ashes yeah I'm very rebellious in that way (laughs) and it it's funny I I used to actually condemn like that part of myself of being this you know rebel in a lot of ways used to fight my parents. Like, you know, I, there was no telling me, like, if you told me no, I'd be, I would be going and doing it. The exact yeah. thing you told me I can't do. And I really thought it was, I never saw it as a gift until recently, mm-hmm. really. And I realized like so many child stars, like, you know, never, I mean, they don't make it to 40 a mm-hmm. lot of the time. And, you know, I, I, I've been through it all. Like I've been mm-hmm. to the depths and there's just this fight in me and this rebelliousness of like, no, I'm, I, and I, I see it as such a gift now that it, it's really pulled me out of so many dark moments in my life, mm-hmm. um, to get me here mm-hmm. to this point. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's, it is, a, it is a gift. It really is. And it's, it's saved my life many a time. So that, uh, I'd say the best way to describe it, we talked about this on a podcast the other day, is the deviant within us mm-hmm. that says, yeah, but why are there things the way that they are? Or actually, you know, I'm not going to prescribe to that or subscribe to that belief system or that way of operating. Um, so with the acknowledgement that there's like, there's been this deviant within you that has, oh, yeah. uh, has, has actually been the thing that has allowed you to be here today. Mm-hmm. Um, with that being said, has there been something that has significantly shifted you onto the spiritual path of, and when I say spiritual path, it's really just a, a journey of self-awareness, again, mm-hmm. like inside out, but has there, was there a specific thing like, for example, um, you know, plant medicines or retreats or things that have supported you? Yeah, breath work actually was the breath first work. thing that, yeah. Um, I, so when I was 30, I checked myself into a treatment center for anxiety and depression because it was mm-hmm dark (laughs) it really was it was horrible um and I had I had always had someone around me like I'd never been without another human I was so codependent and Mm -hmm. I was like I can't live the rest of my life like Mm -hmm. this um and so I checked myself in for three weeks and which was the beginning of starting to understand myself but then I started breath work maybe like a year after that and that's when I was like oh (laughs) what is this like what is this like what is this other part of myself I'm getting in touch with like I mean it just opened up it was like a I don't even know. It was like a bomb went off inside of me. And it was like, yeah. we're going to bring up everything that could <sighs> possibly be brought up in such a short amount of time. And it was beautiful. And that was, that was it. That was, that was what started it all for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. The answer has been hidden in plain sight this whole time. Right. right. It's like right here. Right right this whole totally. time. Totally. And it seems so simple, but ultimately we can go through the realm and the myriads of complication or complexity, mm-hmm. but then I actually return back to the place of simplicity all along. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would love to touch on, um, Still in today's society, we have this version of what success is. And it's, it's this very old paradigm operation of, well, success is being rich and famous and having right. lots of money and lots of followers. And so yes. like, we're like striving for this, this thing. This, this, this will be the place that happiness is born from. When I reach the top of this mountain and I've got all the money and I've got all the fame, I'm going to be so happy. Um, from somebody that has achieved so much from the outside in yes. um, within your life. That's definitely not true. <laughs> that is not it. Um, because ultimately, ultimately, once you have it, then you're chasing it. Yeah. You're, you're chasing it. And if you, if you don't learn how to ride the ups and downs of success in business and life in general, um, you know, you're, those down moments like are going to feel so heavy Mm -hmm. like we can't just shoot up to the top and then just stay there Mm -hmm. like just it's and then like I say you it becomes an addiction of chasing it um Mm -hmm. and you know like I 
when releasing God's work, like my, my benchmark of success is so different these days. I mean, literally when I say get off on people feeling, it's like, cause that's really my benchmark of success mm-hmm. these days. It's like, did I touch you? Mm-hmm. Did I move you? Yeah. And you know, did my art create a better, help you create a better world for yourself? Um, and that's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know, and hopefully we sell enough records to continue to make them. <laughs> but that's really like, I mean, it used to be about numbers and I don't even pay attention. Like it just, it doesn't, that doesn't matter to me anymore. No. Cool. If, I mean, they, they've, I my friend Hannah sitting over there. They'll be like, your song's number one or we did this. And I'm like, cool. And like, <laughs> I'm just, it doesn't even, it's amazing, yeah. but it really doesn't register because mm-hmm. that's not what, that's not what I'm, why I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, the, and also, I mean, the other reason I do it is just to continue to have this relationship with creation. Like for me, it's, it, it's so, that's a drug in itself. Like mm-hmm. it's so exciting to be able to continue to, you know, create something beautiful from thin air. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is, it's just like this being this open channel, this open vessel, like to, I could have the worst day and then like write a verse to a song and be like, Oh my God, life is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's just this beautiful connection. And I love that connection. Mm-hmm. I cherish it. It's, it's, it's incredible. We all have it. Mm-hmm. Some of us are just more aware of it yeah. and more attuned to it because we, that's, it's been my job for a yeah. long time, yeah. but um, without it, if it wasn't my job, I would still, I'd still, you know, it's still there. Uh-huh. Through the direction that you've you've taken with um, with your work, based off of how it makes you feel, and therefore from that medicine impacting others from a place of inspiration, um, it brings me an immense amount of hope for the direction that we're moving in in humanity. Oh, and it, it's because, uh, as a child, I have been sort of programmed to idolize uh, pop stars mm-hmm. and singers, and this version or this veneer version of them mm-hmm. that is created by their label yeah. to then sell and to make the numbers to then yeah. ultimately make profit so it is an industry it um, is. and it's a wild industry. it is wild and it's so interesting because i um so not to interrupt you but there's the, this one thing because i i i don't even i'm part of it but i don't even consider myself part of it anymore and it's in, it's interesting because sometimes i sit and go Were, was something trying to protect me from Mm -hmm. you know, all of the, what I would call perceived failures Mm -hmm. or, you know, when I, when I decided to not really be so involved in the music industry anymore, um, and do it my own way, it was like, wait, I think something was protecting me from something, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, Mm -hmm. I, I really, you, it is, it's about, it's shiny and it's pretty and, you know, it's so manufactured Mm -hmm. and it works and it's great for people who want to do it, but I lost, like, I didn't, at some point, you just don't know who you are. Yeah. Um, and I started to have to make music that I loved. Mm-hmm. And like you said, is medicine. And my music's always been medicine. I feel like there's always been, even from the beginning, mm-hmm. um, you know, I was, when, when Blue was released, <laughs> like it was so different than anything that was out at the moment. Mm-hmm. I was doing something so unique for that time. So there's always been the sense of rebelliousness in my music too. And, um, kind of pushing the envelope. And just when people thought I was one thing, I would go over here and do something else. And I got my hand slapped so many times for that. Like mm. you're supposed to be the thing that we can stick in a box and market, uh-huh. you know, how do we market? How do we market you one way, one minute and something else the next? And it's like, well, that, that is what you market. Like yeah. <laughs> to me, it's like, that's the gift. Like I can do all these things and not till, you know, these last few years have I, I truly seen it as a gift and allowed myself just the creativity to just do what my heart wants to do. Mm-hmm. And people connect with that. I think, you know, you really, it is a leap of faith in a world where everything is so done, mm-hmm. you know, to be real um, is a leap of faith. Because um, sometimes people don't want to be sold real. They just don't. Because it makes them feel something yeah, that they may it, not want to feel. Because it makes them feel something real. <laughs> yeah, something real. And you're, but I think we're getting to a place where I think there's a lot of people who do want that. And sometimes they don't even know they want that until, yeah. until it's given to them because they're fed. 
there have had so much of the opposite. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, to be an artist in this world that's still got a toe in the music industry and, but still doing my own thing. Like it's, it's such a, I mean, that in itself is a, is a feat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it really is. It's a revolution. It actually. is a revolution. It's a revolution yeah. in real time on the micro or on the macro experience. Yes. That's that's what I that's yeah. what I experience from it is oh, the, the world's evolving. We're waking up. Mm-hmm. And um I really f- I feel the shift in consciousness is happening everywhere and it's inviting everyone left, right, and center. Everywhere I look, people are being invited to feel the things that maybe their mother hasn't felt and has been passed totally. on and it's running so deep and mm-hmm. yet. I don't think that we can get enough safe spaces for people to feel right now, just to know that they can be loved in whatever expression it is mm-hmm. that is moving through them so that they can actually start to operate from the inside out as opposed mm-hmm. to from the outside in. Indeed. Now, in a world that we are being sold um, this belief that we're inherently unworthy until we have X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. um, I think the unworthiness runs within pretty much everybody that I know. So it's like the real pandemic. Um, so and then on top of that, there's an extra layer from your life's journey, which is, to be human on the planet is already very discombobulating. And then on top of that, to be under a microscope yeah, and to have projections, like it's painful when friends project or community project, yeah. but when you have when the world projects the <laughs> whole world and millions of people. Yeah. So then, then I would love to hear a little bit about your journey with your self-worth and how that has felt. Oh, I still, it's still a journey. It's still a journey. Um, yeah, it's still a journey. I, um, the projection of the world is really fascinating. I remember a time um, when I had so much negativity coming back at me and there was a moment that it clicked that I was like, oh, this has nothing to do with me. Like mm-hmm. these are, you know, this is how people feel about themselves. This is how people judge themselves. This is how people make themselves feel better mm-hmm. um, for all of the hurt that's inside of them. And when that clicked for me, I was like, oh, I can pretty much take anything. I really like I can look at things and laugh and I'm like, okay, cool. Or feel really like feel a lot of empathy for someone who's hurting that much. Like mm-hmm. um, there I just remember I remember being on Twitter one day and that clicking for me. And I'm like, oh, like just the change of perception and perspective mm-hmm. was like my whole world just shifted. Mm-hmm. And it became so much easier to be in the public eye. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, self, self love. Um, it's really interesting. I was just sharing this with my friend. Um, there's a book called the origins of you, um, Mm -hmm. that I've been reading. And one of the questions that she asked, she asked people to finish this. She was giving a speech and she asked people to finish the sentence. I am unworthy because, Mm -hmm. and, um, Mm -hmm. she was saying that so many people had their own version of why they were unworthy. And I asked myself that question and what came up was I'm ugly. Mm. And um, <laughs> it's very raw. So that's, I, I will, I'll probably cry about it. But um, <laughs> it was, I've had psoriasis since I was two and mm. I was covered by the time I was six. And mm. um, I grew up also in a house that was very, was, there was a lot of verbal abuse around looks, not towards me, but to, you know, to, to my mother. And um I think I internalized all of that. And I was, I was shocked at actually what came up when I asked myself that question. Cause there's mm-hmm. so much of me that knows that's so not true, mm-hmm. but there's so much of me that still, I'm like, Oh yeah, I still believe that. Mm-hmm. And I started to look at, Oh, how much of my life have I um, tried to overcompensate in all these other areas of my life for that one belief. And just the awareness of that in the last couple of days, I'm like, wow. Um, I start. I started to feel things shift already around that for mm-hmm. myself, and it's these little insidious, like core beliefs that we don't necessarily have the right questions to get to sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it's such a simple question: mm-hmm. finish the sentence. Mm-hmm. And it like really opened up because I've done so much work around my self worth, but I, it opened up my eyes to like the the core of it, and um. Yeah, even just the awareness of it, I've started to see things shift mm-hmm. in my life. And um, yeah, it's it's a journey. I don't feel like anybody walks this world without having a worthiness wound. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, when you're put under my microscope, like you start to pick apart everything, your looks, what you say, what you should say, what you shouldn't say, who you're going to offend, who you're not going to offend. Like 
it's exhausting. <laughs> so exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting. And this, the energy that's freed up when you're like, I'm just going to show up as me and I'm probably going to make a lot of shitty mistakes, mm-hmm. but, and I can apologize for those when I do and learn from them, but this is who I am. Take it or leave it. Mm-hmm. Like, because ultimately I can live with me at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Like I can, sometimes I don't love who showed up that day, but I still love her. I still can find ways to love her. Mm-hmm. Um, I maybe wish it was different, but I still can lay my head down at night and go, you know what? You did your best. Mm -hmm. And I think from a recovering perfectionist point of view, you you did your best. (laughs) It's like, um, (sighs) it's the most loving thing that you can give yourself Mm -hmm. just to be like, you did, you did a good job. You showed up, Mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's, it's really refreshing to, to hear you you know, so transparently and vulnerably share like what goes on behind the scenes as well. (laughs) Because I think that it's in those moments that the relatability gets locked in. Like it's very difficult to relate to someone's highlight reel. Yeah. And we all try to show it. It, It's our stories. (laughs) I'm like, what I'm doing. And and I'm like day three in bed. I'm like, I feel so unworthy. Look at this other person living such a fabulous life. (laughs) And we, I love showing this part of me too. It's so freeing. It really is. I mean, the way we free ourselves up and it's so, it's so incredible to give other people permission to do the same. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing the really shitty things that I've shared about myself that I think are just cringe. And then you have all these people come and say, thank you, because I was feeling that today or I yeah. needed that or I needed that permission to do the same. And that's what we really need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what we really need. We don't need people, you know, and I look, I always love posting a great bikini shot from a vacation, but we really don't need any more of those. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, right. we need the real shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was the spaceship music video for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was iPhone shot by your husband mm, yeah. for the first and foremost, which I absolutely adore. It's yeah. stripping it back to basics. It's going from the complexity back to the simplicity. Um, it's you with no makeup. Wearing a blanket. I can't tell you, by the way, how many times I've been in the desert bawling my eyes out, just wrapped in a blanket and naked underneath <laughs> it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and then, so there was like, ah, oh, you should have made a music video out of it. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, where's my camera? <laughs> exactly. Where's my husband <laughs> with an iPhone? <laughs> totally. Um, uh. And uh, it, there was also a mention of um, the Pleiades in that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I was like, okay i see you like i was um tickled in the best way and so unexpected as well i would love to you just share a little bit about when you're in that that moment and you're having a conversation with the Pleiades. like there's like like okay i came here but i'm also not from here (laughs) and i have like a homesickness of a memory that i don't fully remember here but i feel it in the core of my being that it doesn't have to be this tough yeah oh my god yeah um, that's so funny. I've had a couple people mention that to me recently and I just, I really wanted to put that word in the song and I'm like, we can't talk about a spaceship and outer space and mm-hmm. without putting the Pleiades in there. And, um, you know, as a songwriter to like figure out what do you rhyme with Pleiades and, um, nom- uh, yeah, this is nominee. Yeah. I think Pleiades. Yeah. I was nominee. Um, <laughs> and it, my dear friend, Daryl Brown, who is my co-creator who wrote the song with me, um, we just had a blast, like trying to fit that in the song. Um, but yeah, no, I have a, I have a friend named Ashley Wood who has, um, a pon- podcast called Align Within and, mm-hmm. um, she talks a lot about the Pleiades and I was reading a lot of her stuff at the time and, um, connected with her over like, I feel like there's this piece of me that's like mm-hmm. not from here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which i would no. my assumption would be the connection with your deviant nature yeah that, for that's sure. like a memory in you that's like no yeah for sure this is not how it needs to be done yeah i think so and so that was yeah that was kind of my inspiration at the time for trying to fit that in the song which was mm-hmm. really fun 
Well, I love that you left that little nugget in there because yeah. when I was going through the I know people, the list, people are probably going, what are the Pleiades? Yeah. Like Googling, um, oh, which I'm is like, what I wanted people to do. I'm like, go, oh, go. That's explore. my sister right there. Yeah. Like, let's go. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it really, um, it added an extra dimension. I think that if you, uh, it will be received by those that have the eyes or the ears to be able to hear it or see it. Um, for me, perfectly, because I'm reading the lyrics. So um, yeah. I'm, like, going through <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Um, so I got the first experience of the of, of the rawness of the music video um, and then right at the end which I absolutely adored blanket comes off walks yes. into the distance but ass naked yeah. and I also can't tell you how many times I've been in nature but ass naked yeah, I mean, and- <laughs> you know what I actually it's something that I crave doing more of as being in nature naked mm-hmm. and I don't give myself enough of it yeah. um, And but it is like when I when I think of just the f- like how I want to set myself free you know when I thought about that with the video I was like here I am in the middle of nowhere like why would I why would I be we came we came in that way why wouldn't I go out that way like mm-hmm. that just seems like the yeah. natural thing to do yeah um talk about reclamation I mean reclaiming my own body yeah like just in its full essence and glory like as a woman mm-hmm. um I want I, something I deeply desire more of for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, it was a, a, a massive permission slip just yes. stamped right on that whole music. So video. everyone, please go to the desert, <laughs> yeah, take yeah. your clothes off. <laughs> it's out in the open. And then in that moment, when you are in your full glory and yes. the sun is peeking over the mountains, you just yell out loud, Leanne Rhymes, thank you. <laughs> Just send it out. Please, somebody film that if you do it, because I really want to see that. (laughs) It's pure medicine. It's real shit. I love it. Um, And so it's already hard enough to express our emotions um, just in general in our interpersonal dynamics and relationships. But what you're doing right now, and when I say the revolutionary essence, is that you're bearing your emotions to the world. And it's almost like the the visual I get is like Hanuman who like rips his heart out of mm. his chest and just goes, take it or leave it, this is all I got. Mm. And it's his heart. And it's the vulnerable nature of this is my challenge. This is my experience with anxiety. This is my experience with my mental health. This is the the tools that have supported me. This is just where I'm at. Mm. And this is what I'm going to present to the world. Um, I would say that it takes an immense amount of courage just when you're not under a microscope. Oh, for sure. I just don't know any other way to live. I mean, <laughs> I know that sounds, um, I know that sounds weird maybe, but I, I, you know what? It started for me as a songwriter. I, um, I wrote this song called Borrowed. My husband and I went through a very public affair and I wrote this song called Borrowed. And it was such, if you listen to the song, it's so polarizing Mm -hmm. that I've had fans be like, we can't listen to it. Still fans of mine, but they're like, we can't listen to it. It's just like too triggering, which I'm like, cool, because I, (laughs) I went there and I Uh make you, I made you feel something, even if it's something you don't want to feel like I made you feel something. So I, when I went there, I was a songwriter. I'd been writing songs for a while before that. But when I knew I could go to that place and be on the floor for six hours, bawling my eyes out, like writing this incredibly like painful song um, and didn't necessarily paint me in the best of lights. Mm -hmm. um, I knew there was no turning back from that, from that. I've always expressed that kind of emotion on stage when I sing but to write and to have that click and to to not turn away from the truth, um, I think that's when I started started to begin to live this way. If like I don't, when I say I don't know any other way to live, it's like since then I really don't. I don't know any other way to live. Um, mm-hmm. It just feels so confining mm-hmm. to just to not tell the truth. Mm-hmm. It's painful. Like that's that's the pain. Mm-hmm. Um, to hide. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, it's, it is, there are places where, um, that I'm kind of pushing my own boundaries with that, um, <laughs> coming into creating new things, um, and being seen in new ways in the world. Mm-hmm. And I have like, there's a song called something better's coming on my, on the latest record. And I've yet to sing it live because we've gone to rehearse it and I just ball. It's, it's this joyous, like, like really moving, like hopeful song. And I just, I, I can't stop crying when I sing it. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna have to wait on that one. Um, but there's, <laughs> there's just places where 
and even even my live shows, I've come to learn like I'm an, I mean I am gonna cry most of the time. It does happen during my show. I'm not gonna apologize for it. Like <laughs> this is just who I am. Yeah. I'll talk to people about my periods on stage. I'll be like, I'm this I'm hormonal. Like <laughs> it's just I don't know. I feel like I just want to take all the things that I was that I had shame around as a kid and be like, there's nothing to be ashamed of, you know. And yes. so. For me, yeah, it's just the only, it's the only way to live. It's the real real in a world of illusions, <laughs> in yeah. a world of mass, in a world of pretending, in a world of filters. It's, it's the real that penetrates all of the illusions because it's based off of a place of feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's, <clears throat> it's, it's everything that I believe that the planet is needing and is craving. And it's yeah. ultimately the feminine essence too. We've got the masculine and the feminine. Totally within our own individual beings, also the masculine and feminine poles on the planet. And the feminine is the emotions, it's the emotional waters, it's the feeling. And I believe that the masculine is massively out of balance with the feminine as a collective. And yeah. so when we have individuals like yourself that are impacting millions of people on a daily basis, that are choosing to actually show up in the courage because it's the choice's choice at this point, mm. to be in the commitment to real and then share share that real and share those emotions you're giving permission to left right and center knowing or unbeknown to those that are sitting at home sitting in their room and accessing something that actually is giving them an opportunity to feel what they've not been feeling mm -hmm. and therefore actually an opportunity to heal yeah absolutely. and there was something that i posted on my stories that sent me like a little yeah. clapping image, yeah. like, yay, yay. <laughs> which was the real flex is actually how many people we can inspire yes this yes. is the flex right now. Absolutely. Can we make it cool? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so with you on that. I I love it. I mean, I to yeah, to feel. I mean, I when I think about the things that I'm creating in my life right now, um for the masses and that I want people to come to, I'm you know, I, the main my main objective is what ride am I taking them on mm -hmm. and what feeling am I trying to to evoke? Mm -hmm. And you know, does it take them on this journey and, and allow them to go into that space? So for me, like everything is about feeling mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. And I just mentioned it before the podcast as I'm putting my hearing aids in and, and you're like, oh, like listening and uh, asking me a little bit more about what it yeah. is that I'm navigating. And ultimately my hearing has decreased um, exponentially, but my ability to feel has gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. And so Albert Einstein talks about how energy is not created or destroyed. It's only changed in mm -hmm. form. So if it's not going towards yeah. hearing everything, it's Something gone else. to this realm yeah. of feeling. Yeah. Now, there's a there's a there's two sided coin to this. Mm -hmm. Is to be a HSP, who is a highly sensitive person. Mm -hmm. um, it also comes with feeling everyone's emotions, mm -hmm. their process, and the amount of information that's coming in is, it can get to the point, and also on top of it, not being able to hear the words in the space, that I start to feel social anxiety, mm -hmm. my anxiety, um, which it really just started for me when my hearing started to decrease, mm -hmm. even though I, I've known you uh, to speak into um, your relationship with anxiety and how it's been good times uh, yeah. <laughs> good times we've been riding yes. good um, times. and so I would love to hear just a little bit more about um, your experience with anxiety and how you've chosen to work with it yeah um, I think I've always been pretty anxious mm -hmm. um, just growing up around in a, in a household, my my mom was really sad and depressed a lot. My dad was very angry and there was always, I was an only child. So there was, I was constantly trying to figure out people's emotions, trying to keep them happy to be safe. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, hypersensitive, overly sensitive, and then, and then put me in front of the world <laughs> and then have people grabbing at me and having people age. like pull the fork out of my mouth as I'm eating, like to get an autograph when I was younger. And then like talk about, talk about hyper aware um, so that's, I mean, that's really, that's where it started. Um, and then, you know, I think the fracturing and internalizing other people's opinions and trying to live up to somebody else's expectations only added to that. And then, yeah. Um, and then now re recognizing as I'm taking care of my, uh, taking care of my health, how mercury has played into that for me, like having high levels of mercury in my body and, mm -hmm. um, cleansing that out and mm -hmm. now feeling I have a lot less anxiety now mm -hmm. these days, but when I do, and it, it happens daily, like I'll have some sort of whatever uh, happen to me mm -hmm. where I feel more anxious. And, um, 
I think one of the greatest things that I've been doing recently is stopping and asking myself what's present, Mm. Um, what emotions are here. And so, you know, of course, like anxiety, not really an emotion, but a a feeling that's there. So I'm anxious. Mm -hmm. What emotions are under that fear? Um, Sometimes grief. Um, And as I start to go through this process, I just kind of allow, I, I actually welcome it and allow it to be here. And the, the more I stop, when I stop trying to push it away, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm less anxious. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, I can just be with what's present. And I'll spend like a couple minutes, like I say my Southern term wallowing, my wallowing in all the feelings of, in especially the discomfort, instead of pushing away, just allowing it to be there. And then I'm like, oh, there's space. Oh, there's joy. Oh, I'm not so, I'm okay now. Like there's, I just, I create space for what's here. And for me, like going through my day, I do that like three or four times a day. And it's, it's a fairly new practice over the past couple of months. And it's shifted so much for me because mm-hmm. I, I think so much energy is we expend so much energy just trying to change what is mm-hmm. instead of just going, oh, OK, this is where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. And realizing like that that can shift too. Mm-hmm. like it's not this isn't that horrible feeling is not here forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's been, that's been something that's been really huge for me. So you, it sounds like you've become the student of the emotion or of, of, of the contraction that is present and yeah. actually just taking a moment to slow down yeah, and, be and with be it. curious. Yeah. Curious. That is yeah. an ally throughout the whole journey inwards. Mm, like if we're going be. on the, ver- the, the, the voyage that is the internal journey, yeah. curiosity is um, such an incredible trusted tool and ally Mm -hmm. to be able to be a student of that which is here to show us and there's a mantra that's really supported me that my sister um, Brianna shared with me which is the most sacred thing is what is Mm, and just okay so if all of a sudden I'm feeling angry or I'm feeling anxious like okay this also has a sacred purpose Mm -hmm. as opposed to operating in this binary experience of Mm -hmm. well this is a good emotion right and this is a bad emotion oh yeah yeah, that just needs to be taken out of the vocabulary. <laughs> it's problematic because yeah. we keep ourselves enslaved in this invisible cage that we've constructed yeah. um, based off of something being right and wrong or good and bad. And I heard in one of the podcasts that you did that you had to break down um, some of the religious programming that was placed yeah. in your consciousness, which is one of the main reasons for this binary experience of like good huge. and evil. Oh my God. So yeah, it's huge. I mean, I was raised Southern Baptist and... Um, I organized religion, I think has a place and for those who it's part of their life, like no judgment at all. For me, Mm -hmm. it was not the right thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was very like at six, I was having conversations with my mom about like, I didn't understand why only a certain amount of people were getting into heaven. They were all God's children. And I was like, this doesn't make sense to me at Mm -hmm. all at like six. Mm -hmm. And, um, so yeah, my own journey, I, I ran so far away from all of it and to find my way back to it um, in my own way um, and my connection to creation more than anything, I think, is my spirituality. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, it, to undo all of that. I'm still undoing it. I think that's kind of a lifelong journey. Yeah. Um, because it's so, it's so fundamentally who we are and yeah. what we've been taught, mm-hmm. especially as women. Um, you know, the song like the wild on my record that is talk about a reclamation of my own sexuality and sensuality and my own rage, yeah. um, around womanhood and the way we've been shamed and cast out all the parts of ourselves we've cast out of ourselves. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, that for me was, I remember writing that song and going, can I write this? Because all of the voices and all the things that I've been told are, oh, you're so bad for like questioning. And yeah. um, and then to sing it live, to see people, I see not only women, but men. Like I've had people, like the whole audience stand up after the song. They barely even know because it's what it's stirring in them is like, is is this. It's yeah. this, this deep desire we all know we all know we're not fundamentally evil like just that teaching in itself like you are you're a sinner it's like yeah I make mistakes you know <laughs> we're human I mean if you know that's it we're human 
Yeah. Um, I just find, yeah, that that belief in itself that there's something wrong with me mm-hmm. from the very beginning, um, man, has it caused some turmoil in my life and a, a lot of people's. But it's the one thing that when I started to not look at life as so black and white, everything's good and bad, mm-hmm. good or evil, um, and yeah, life changes. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, but we live in that duality too. I mean, we live in a world of duality, but when you can understand that everything is, has a flip side of the coin mm-hmm. and that we are, we, we are both and we exist somehow in the middle of all of that. Mm-hmm. We exist on both ends of the spectrum and in between. Mm-hmm. Um, there's such a, everything for me is on a, on a, a spectrum. Everything's a spectrum. Mm-hmm. Although there's these two bipolar ends, there's, Everything's a spectrum. Yeah. Um, and when you can start living in that spectrum in that gray area, like life becomes a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot less judgment yes, in self reprimanding that absolutely. is involved. And um I love when you know, and I talked to you about the the self worth piece and and operating moving and continuing to decondition these belief systems of right and wrong. Um, no matter how deep on my journey I go into my own land in a landscape. I just become more aware of the stories as opposed to um, I'm, I'm no longer as um, uh, identified with mm-hmm. them in the sense of like they just they're, they're now just in my uh, awareness, mm-hmm. like they're my field of awareness as opposed to a blind spot. Mm-hmm. So for the majority totally. of the life living from the outside in, they would operate here yeah. and I would just feel like disconnected but not sure why. Mm-hmm. But then doing the internal work, what it's actually done is it just brought it to yeah. the, the awareness. Absolutely. Well, that's like me saying I'm ugly. And uh-huh. then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, now it's in my awareness. And now when something comes up, I'm like, oh, that's just that piece. Right. That's that old belief. Right. And so you can start to untangle from, from mm-hmm. that. Um, it's no longer in the subconscious, like mm-hmm. running your life. And mm-hmm. I always think, wow, that's been running my life. Like what else is running my life? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, get it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? But yeah, no, yeah, I agree. It, it becomes more in your awareness. And it's not that it doesn't come up mm-hmm. because it does. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, it does. Um, but it just no longer has the kind of gripping, you know, control over you that it mm-hmm. that it used to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I find that um, just through speaking about these things and not coming from a position of having it all figured out, Mm -hmm. but allowing ourselves to be witnessed in the, I haven't got it all figured out. I'm so human. I'm going to share with you the journey of my human nature Mm -hmm. and may that empower you to make peace to some aspect of the part of you that you've deemed unlovable or unworthy. And that's actually the thing that connects all of us is our challenging uh, challenges and our suffering as opposed to Absolutely. our feats and our wins because not everyone can, most part, people can't relate to those moments. Mm-hmm. But it's in those raw vulnerable moments that it's like, oh, yeah, I too actually um, see myself in that and therefore if she can do it, so can I. Mm-hmm. And that's really what it's about. Um, so now that uh, there's a book um, called The Second Mountain, I think it's Stephen Brooks that wrote it um, or David Brooks. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. Bless Mr. You. Brooks. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> you did a good job. It's a great book. The <laughs> um, Second Mountain, it's called? The Second Mountain. And it was talking about how the first mountain is what we talked about, what we thought success was, right? If like, oh, I'm climbing this first mountain. I'm going to have the money. I'm going to have the fame. And I'm going to be happy. And you get to the first mountain, you're like, wait, hold on. There's a second mountain. And that mm-hmm. actually, this is not at all what I thought was it Mm -hmm. and so now I've got to go on the decline which Mm -hmm. is the unlearning everything that I thought success was to even get to this point to then actually climb the second mountain so based off of um, the witness of you have climbed the first mountain Mm -hmm. achieved what most would deem as the pinnacle what would you say lies at the second mountain god I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, some days I feel like I'm still in the valley. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Other days I feel like I'm, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the way up the mountain, the second one. Um, Do we ever have to climb it? Like, does there have to be a second mountain? 
Possibly Why not. can't we just hang out in the valley? Because there I'm could okay also be that. a third mountain after. Uh, right? It's I'm okay. We don't Why know. Do we, no, I'm okay with not climbing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, like that's actually the second mountain, though. Maybe that's it. Being yeah, okay with may, not climbing maybe it. Maybe that's it. Like I can just stand at the bottom and go, "Oh, that's nice. Have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. I mean, for me, it's just. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's so funny that you mentioned that because my mom reminded me of a dream that I had when I was little the other day. And I was like six or seven and she said I had this dream where I was told, like, don't go to the top of the mountain. Mm. And um, yeah, and it was, she just reminded me of that because my mom is Southern Baptist still and boarding a Christian and we have very different views, but see eye to eye on some things. And, um, you know, she believes that, the success and everything was at the top of that mountain. And um, she, she might be right. I mean, but there's so much I learned from going to the top of that mountain, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, I guess I, I had the, some people, I guess, don't come back from that one. Um, Mm -hmm. I think I, I had um, my rebelliousness, I guess, allowed me to come, to come down from there and to be okay with coming down from there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, for me now, like, it's just about, yeah, it's about connection. And it's really, connection is really interesting for me because I can be very reclusive. And um, because I think I've had so many people judge me and, you know, have an opinion about me. And, you know, sometimes I feel like when people meet me, they don't really meet me. Mm -hmm. It takes them a moment to get past like what they think they're meeting before they meet, you know, to really meet me. Um, And so there's this deep desire for a connection and also this like terror of it. Mm -hmm. And, but I also know like what I'm wanting to create in my world and um, the relationships I want to have, like calls for this deeper sense of connection. So for me, that's kind of like the dance right now of, Mm -hmm. um, of learning how to be even more like deeply connected to not only, you know, my my audience but people in general my husband my friends Mm. um and Mm. yeah I think for me that's how do I deepen my life like how do I deepen my connection to I guess really I think about all things like my connection to my gift my what I want to create the people that are around me um to nature to just life itself like how do I deepen that and oh, you're gonna cry, uh, but that's it. Like how um, I think that's what I desire most. And if I really think about it, so maybe that's in the valley, and maybe it's not on the second mountain, and I'm okay with that. That's perfect. <laughs> I mean, it, uh, hold on. I have, I have stuff for you. Thank you. I already have enough to go around. I can share. Your subconscious self was like, this cardigan because it's got pockets and I'm going to cry. I think, A, I mean, what I'm hearing is um, the being at peace with not needing to get anywhere. Yeah. And recognizing actually there's nowhere to get and everywhere to be. And in the being... Um, the deepening of self-awareness, self-love, therefore your capacity to love those that are in your immediate field, your mm-hmm. friends, your your husband, your loved ones, your family, and loving really well and creating from a place of genuine, this is medicine for my heart, and then from that place, may I inspire you to be able to feel deeper so that you can heal. Yeah. And that's it. While people are passing, <laughs> you go, must get to the second mountain. I know. Like, right? you're missing the point. Yeah. It's right, right here. Sun's hitting uh, perfectly. There's a little totally. flower on the floor. Uh, totally. That's it. That's it. I love that. I, I love that we just discovered that together. I feel. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel myself uh, coming off of the mountain. And, yeah. And, Don't and, go. I mean, like, wait, I think she's got the the vibe here i think she's actually <laughs> got the answer well and if you're i mean too if you're you know if you're gonna climb it let's like let's do it together like you know i think that's ultimately uh-huh. the greatest thing is i don't I, I there's such been there's been such loneliness in my life mm-hmm. um there's this really weird thing about being great at something especially as a child there's such a loneliness that comes with it mm-hmm. people don't tell you about um and now, like, I, and that loneliness is, you know, definitely when I think about anxiety and my depression and 
um, feeling isolated. I mean, that's contributed a lot to, to the anxiety, but you know, um, I think I, I really, when I create and when I'm successful, like I just want, I want people around for it. Like, you know, it's, it's not something I want to do alone. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think that isolation, like more than anything in the second half of my life, I, um, I want that connection with other people Mm -hmm. and yeah, no more, no Mm -hmm. more, um, isolation. Mm hundred yeah. percent. I don't think, feel like it's actually very real unless it's like fully shared. Totally. It's in the bliss of actually witnessing another that is also lighting mm-hmm. up from the experience or just being able to share it together and, and, and receiving a beautiful sunset or just a hug or a moment mm-hmm. of silence. Um, and actually miss the world of complexity. I think it's the, the, the most beautiful moments in my life have come down to very simple moments. And my yeah. my new success barometer has come down to at the end of the day, I sit down, I say, okay, was today successful? And my version of success is how much did I laugh today? Oh, nice. I love that. And that's it. I did (laughs) yesterday. um, It was raining here. It was just like sprinkling Mm -hmm. and I love the rain. I'm obsessed with the rain. I don't know what it is, but it just, I love it. And so I walked out with my dog in the rain and like put my face up to the sky and I was just so loving it. And then I went inside and I don't know what made me go like chase my husband around the house. Like we were five-year-olds and <laughs> I was just, and I sat down on the couch and I was like, this has been the best day. And if I, I was starting to think back of why, and it was, those were the two moments that like made it the best day and had really good lunch. I loved the food that I ate. Like it, if I really think about, like you're saying the most precious of days, it's because I laughed. I enjoyed life. Like there's usually some kind of food component in there for me <laughs> and like got a solid yeah, snack a array solid. ready to go <laughs> and yeah it's it's not like oh i i want a grammy yeah i mean that's amazing yeah. but like there's so many beautiful little moments of life that you know were so precious and yeah. you're right like did i laugh did i love did i cry did i feel mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that was a good day and I, I've checked all of those boxes on this podcast. Uh, alone. Yes, <laughs> cry here with totally. Me. Uh, um, I, you know, at the end of the day, when 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 people do pass away, I've just noticed that what they share is like, wow, that person really made me feel so special. Mm-hmm. Like, it was never about what they really accomplished; it was about how they made people feel. Absolutely, and that was really that's really what's the most important thing at the end of the day is if we're like you need to accomplish this thing and I'm super stressed and I'm flipping off the guy in traffic and then my assistant forgot my honey and my coffee and so I'm mad at them. And it's like, we're missing the point Yeah. by getting into this like future timeline of goal orientated when it's actually process orientated, which Mm -hmm. is the taking the break in between the mountains and getting the flask out and having a cup of tea and noticing the beautiful scenery around us, which is love people really well. And our capacity to love others is our, is our capacity to love all aspects of ourselves. And to love all our aspects of ourselves is to feel our emotions. Mm-hmm. And then to transcend this binary experience, there's some sort of inherent right or wrong about these emotions. And then from that place of wholeness of just recognizing the most sacred thing is what is, then I can actually truly create a legacy, which is the thing that will be remembered way long after I'm passed, which mm-hmm. is how much I love the world. True. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So, <laughs> so we, we give. Uh, I, I'm, I've got this really lovely visual of us in between the two mountains and have made complete yes. peace that we don't even need to climb the second one. I think uh, we need to go find two mountains somewhere and like actually take that photo. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you can paint it. And then you need to paint it. Yeah. I need a painting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Yes. One thousand percent. I am like I, I. I do not know how to do art with my hands. I have yet to. I. I can't draw. I can't do anything like that. So, when I see this, I'm like, oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, so, thank you. And that that painting was drawn because of uh, three days of being really, really sad and feeling. Oh, is that like, a recent then? I oh, remember recent. posting about that. On, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I trapped, I trapped. The door was <laughs> I open. But like, <laughs> I put my room, my, myself in my bedroom for three days and I fully, fully gave the full permission of what I call my golem nature, which is just like, mm. I drag my leg into the room and I'm like, ah, oh, my precious, how could everybody <laughs> love me right now? And I like disappear into my cave and I'm like, okay, I'm going to alchemize this sadness into something that is going to remind me the beauty that I have within me Mm -hmm. and that's through the painting process but it was about 
for me, this this specific teaching was around using my voice and sharing my voice um, from my heart. In, and the most loving thing is to do is actually to to be honest mm. from a compassionate place, but also find that sacred no within does what does not feel good. Um, and so that was the yeah. energetics of the initiation. And so that piece I created, which then reactivated me back into um into my into my heart into my truth and now it sits behind you on the podcast while you vulnerably and transparently courageously share <laughs> your stories and your journey I love that I love this piece about you finding your own voice and and finding all the ways that for to to utilize this piece of you because mm-hmm. um I that's been my journey too is you know I've my voice has been this one aspect of my voice my singing voice was just you know was so overly, um, used and appreciated by so many and Mm. so grateful for that. But then there's all of these, the fragmented pieces, like all the other aspects of my voice that I was terrified to use, like to be able to speak my opinion on things, to have a podcast like Mm -hmm. I do now, like to, um, you know, to, to utilize it in different ways that wasn't just my singing voice, um, chanting, like I have a chant record that I did, you know, and never expected to create anything like that. So it was all of these different ways to use my voice Mm. that, um, that one would think with someone who's been so proficient at, you know, using their voice their whole life, like Mm -hmm. wouldn't have these kind of shadow areas around it uh, Mm. and fear. And there's been so much fear and all these other different places that I've now, that's been my journey is to like tap into all these places where I feel like I've had this bit of shadow around it and start to like alchemize that, that piece for myself so mm, that it was um my heart on the mm-hmm. chanting album yeah i play that in when i'm doing healing work oh, on people yay. and i have it been very meticulously in a part of my playlist i love that and then that it makes goes so and it hits and i focus all my love and my attention all my attention and intention through my heart out my hands and onto their heart chakra oh, and then i play your that that song that. and it has been it's been an anthem in the in the in the healing space for me and amazing yeah i've been weaving so with cool. your new like like specifically your most recent album um because of the rawness of the emotions and in general, all of your music has been the theme of my life. Like mm. as a kid, I would be in my bedroom um, singing at the top of my lungs. How do I live? <laughs> and I would like have my mom and dad come into the bedroom. It was a concert oh. and, and I would be giving a concert. And that was the my one. That was my go to. That was the one that, that I felt the most confident behind. <laughs> yeah. And so here I am now in, yeah. you know, my early 30s and uh, to be weaving with you in the medicine space mm. is such, you felt like a sister this whole time oh, and you. to then have been able to actually align with you that I get to receive you in the golden hands on the podcast and just be able to share this with you live while we're filming um, yeah, and in real amazing. time and just to feel you and just say thank you thank for you everything that you have navigated from your deeply aware soul from the get-go and yet alchemizing every single challenge into genuine genuine service for the collective and the healing of the whole and this is one individual that has been massively impacted by your path and i'm forever in your corner thanks yeah thank you thank you you know it's, it's been really cool to see So I have a lot of women who grew up with me that are now, you know, in their 30s and 40s and they're like, they're coming and finding me or, or, you know, again from this different space. And they're like, it's so cool. It's like, we've all been on the same journey. Like we have, (laughs) we have, we have, there's an interconnected nature to all of it and there's a relatability and, um, as, and it's it's the ultimate gift because it it creates this essence of not really feeling so alone anymore. Absolutely. We're actually we're not actually gone mad. We're becoming sane in an insane yeah. world. <laughs> Everyone else has it. gone, God damn it. It's the op- yeah, it's complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So we're just out here doing God's work? Yes. <laughs> you we are. That's it. Yeah, that that's it. it. Cherry on top of the cake. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for Offering having Offering a greatest, greatest gift you could ever give anybody, which is just time and your presence and for bringing your beautiful friend with you as well. Yeah, and, she's the and, best. Uh, for we've been, um, Thanks for Lily and the Wicks. Lily's been given some... Lily! Li- li- ja, here she comes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> You're so good. 
Alrighty. Uh, okay, so thank you so much, beautiful humans, for tuning into another episode of the Deja Blue podcast. What a gift to go on this journey. If you resonate with today's episode and you feel like it could illuminate and activate and inspire your loved ones, then please go ahead and share it. Tag myself and Leanne Rhymes on the stories. And we're so grateful that you came on this journey with us today. And thank you. Thank you. Oh, appreciate it. This is beautiful. Mm. I love you, Lily. <laughs> I love you. Uh-oh.